Hello everyone, as you know, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I am the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com and today I will be talking about how to manage the chemistry of your root zone, specifically how to manage the chemistry of your root zone using runoff. So this video is especially important for all those of you who use run to waste systems where you do not recirculate the solution, but you just irrigate and then you get runoff from a container. So, why is the runoff an important measurement for the chemistry of the root zone? The runoff is the irrigation water that goes through the media and then goes out the other side. By going through this process, the runoff contains a lot of dissolved substances that were inside the media. This allows us to notice changes in the chemical environment of the root zone. Now let's talk about how to properly measure runoff because not all runoff is created the same. Since we want to have a clear snapshot of the root zone environment, we do not want any runoff, but we want runoff measured under very specific circumstances. First of all, we want runoff that is not the first runoff that comes out of the bottom of a plant. So we do not want the initial runoff, but we, what we want is the terminal runoff. So when you water your plant, you should get around 20% of the irrigation volume as runoff. We do not want the start of that runoff, but we want the end. So we want the bottom 20% of that 20% runoff. So after the irrigation is done and there's already been substantial runoff, we want to capture that last bit of runoff, the tail end of the runoff, because that gives us an idea about the steady state of the root zone environment. We also do not want to collect the runoff of a single plant but we want to collect the runoff of multiple plants. This is because a single plant might have problems that might confuse us because of particular circumstances of that plant while collecting runoff from a wide variety of plants will allow us to get a glimpse at what the mean condition of the crop is. Now, the main characteristics of the runoff we want to measure are the pH and the EC, because these are chemical characteristics. By EC, I mean the electrical conductivity of the solution. These are the two values that are the easiest to measure. So these are the values of the terminal runoff that we are going to measure. So, as a summary, we collect the runoff from the tail end. We collect runoff from multiple plants and then we measure the pH and the EC of that runoff. The most important part now is how do I interpret these runoff measurements and react to them so that I can control the chemical environment of the plant? What, what are those runoff measurements telling me? I did a previous video discussing runoff versus no runoff and many of the differences between these two ways of growing. And now I'm going to discuss how to interpret when you have ample runoff how we can interpret this and react to these changes in the root environment. So, several different things can happen and we need to compare the runoff to the input to know how to react. So what you'll do is that you have your runoff measurements and you'll compare this with the measurements of the irrigation solution, the solution you irrigated with, your nutrient solution. If the EC of the runoff increases, then that's normal. The EC will normally tend to increase. So if the EC increases, we can tolerate some increases. Depending on the plant species, we could tolerate increases up to some value. So you need to know what the EC tolerance of your plant is. For flowering plants, this value is usually around three and four millisiemens per centimeter. So we need to ensure that the runoff does not exceed these values. What happens if the runoff is higher than this? If the runoff is higher than this, then we need to adjust the input EC so that we can correct this. And we need to increase the runoff volume. By increasing the runoff volume, we can flush a lot of this accumulation that we have, but then we will waste more nutrients flushing the plant. So a more economic solution, a more environmentally friendly solution, is to lower the EC of the input so that we can lower the EC of the runoff. This might be suboptimal in some cases because the plant is suffering a more steep change in its root environment, but it works just fine and it can be used perfectly, um, it can be used 
very easily to manage the EC of the runoff. So normally you will not lower the EC to just plain water because this can be too harsh for the plant. So normally what you will do is feed something like a 50% solution unless the increase in the EC is way too high. If you are measuring an EC in the runoff of five, let's say, then you should run plain water because the plant will not be shocked because its root environment is already full of nutrients. So you cannot shock a plant by using plain water if it's already full of nutrients inside the root zone. So this is only a shock if there is not heavy accumulation, but if there is heavy accumulation, then a plain water flush, so a plain water irrigation that goes to runoff, is a good way to reduce the EC of the media to an acceptable value. Now, the EC can also come too low, and this is not very common, but if it does come too low, then depending on the plant species, this, this can also be normal because uh, depending on the environmental conditions, this just means that the plant is uptaking more nutrients than water. So it can be normal for the crop. Usually when this happens, it is normal to increase the EC a little bit, but it is also important to look at the dryback. Maybe the dryback of the media is not high enough. So often, it's often the case that when you have this irrigation and you get runoff that is lower EC, what you are missing is high enough dryback to, um, to get enough oxygen into the road zone and enough water uptake. You should also ensure that your environment is allowing for enough water uptake, that you're having enough transpiration through the plant. Because if you have an exceedingly low VPD, which means that water uptake is very small because the plant is not transpiring much, then you can also have this phenomenon. Now, the next important thing is the pH. When you water plants, usually most of the hydroponic plants that we grow are fed at a pH between 5.8 and 6. Most of them have their, their ideal pH between 5.8 and 6.2. We want to ensure that the runoff pH is at around those values. But you'll see that this is often not the case. When you water, you'll notice, for example, for large plants, uh, in their vegetative stage, for example, that the pH is taken up very aggressively because of nitrate uptake. So if the, you notice that the pH of your solution is above 6.5, then you need to correct and feed 5.5. 5. So change the pH of your input to 5.5 5 so, that you are fee, so that your runoff is actually below 6.5. So as soon as you see that move above 6.5, start feeding 5.5. 5. And that way you can sort of correct that. If that is not enough, which often the case it is not, then another measure that works well is to change the ammonium to nitrate ratio of your nutrient solution. Increase the amount of ammonium that you're feeding so that the plant does not change the pH of the solution so aggressively. Remember that pH increases are mainly due to nitrate uptake, so by giving the plant some ammonium, we can shift that nitrogen uptake a little bit so that the pH change is not as aggressive towards the upside. You usually don't want to go above 30% ammonium to nitrate ratio for most of the plants we usually cultivate, like tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, or things like that. But for other plants, you can definitely go higher, although you might then face the opposite problem, which is acidification of the media. When you go to a pH that is too high, you will face problems mainly related to iron, while when you go to pHs that are too low, you'll mainly face problems with micronutrient toxicities. Mainly manganese, toxi ma manganese toxicity is usually the most common. So if your pH drops below 5.5 5, or if it approaches 5.5, 5, then you want to start feeding 6.5. So you go the opposite way. If the runoff is 5.5, then you feed 6.5. If your runoff is 6.5, then you feed 5.5 to try to correct that. And you will normally start feeding at 6. 6 is a very normal pH value to start feeding your plants at. So that's what I advise you start with. And then according to what you get in your runoff, then you can change that to higher or lower. Normally, I advise that you monitor your runoff at least once a day, log the runoff values once a day. When you get something that is too crazy, when you get very high pH, very low pH, very high EC, make sure that you are actually measuring the terminal runoff and that you have at least 20% of your irrigation volume coming out as runoff. Because if the runoff is too little, you're just getting the, a very strong dissolution of the salts that are present, and then this leads to crazy values, because what we want is the steady state after irrigation. So make sure that you are watering enough. Now, another important 
thing is to make sure that the runoff is changing. So the input and the output should not be the same. That is something quite strange. So when you have exactly the same output as input, then that means two things. Either the plant is uptaking exactly the same amount of water and nutrients, and it's just doing that, and it's a very smooth ride, or, which is much more common, you have channeling through your media, so the solution is just going straight through your media and not properly wetting all the root mass and actually dissolving the things that are there. So it is absolutely critical to ensure that the media is being properly irrigated so that it is actually wet enough. This means having enough emitters in your media and if necessary, add a wetting agent to your nutrient solution so that the entire media can be wet. It also works to when you do an irrigation to do the irrigations in small increments instead of a long irrigation. And it also helps to do a very small irrigation to wet the media, then wait, let's say, 10 minutes and then start the larger irrigations so that you can get some wicking in the media. This is especially important with media like rock wool because when it gets too dry, then there's a lot of channeling. It can also happen with media that have a lot of porosity. For example, perlite, which is very, doesn't, have, doesn't retain a lot of water, if you water too quickly, the water will just flow straight through the perlite and the runoff measurements will be significantly less meaningful than what they should be. So wetting is very important. Another thing is make sure all the emitters are actually inside media because another thing that can happen is that you have a disconnected emitter somewhere that is just dumping solution into your drainage and then you're picking that up and you're actually measuring nutrients. So your input and your output are the, are the same because it never went through a plant. So make sure that all the meters that are not used are plugged so that you don't have this issue where you're not even measuring something going through plants. Okay, so these are some of the basic aspects of managing the chemistry of your root zone when you have a run to waste system and you are using runoff to control it. I hope that you learned several useful things about this. It is definitely something that you learn with practice, depending on the plant that you're growing and the environment that you're growing in and the solution that you're using, the changes in the media and the runoff will be different. But looking at the runoff allows you to manage the chemical environment and to allow problems that a lot of growers face, such as what people call nutrient lockout, which are basically issues related to the pH of the media getting out of control or the EC of the media getting out of control. If you monitor this, you'll have around five days of leaning time to react before the plants face problems. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video and bye-bye.